During last year's election, tax was a major issue. Without getting into the politics of it all, National won the election and has been sitting on top of their election promise to change the tax thresholds. They can be found in National's Back Pocket Boost document from August of last year. So what are the tax thresholds? It's basically the tax bans, and by increasing them, more of your income is taxed at a lower rate. For example, if you earn $15,600 a year, Currently, you'd pay 10.5% tax on the first $14,000 you earn, and 17.5% on the next $1,600. Under the government's plan, the whole income would be taxed at 10.5%, as it would all fall into the new threshold. Do note, of course, these were election promises, and later this month we should hear more about their plans and whether they will actually go ahead as initially promised. These have been proposed to take place from the 1st of July 2024. What that means for us is that we keep more of the income that we earn. And what does that mean for the government? It means less tax revenue, which is why we've seen recent calls for job cuts in the public sector. In this video, I'll show you exactly how much you'd save under these proposed tax changes for all incomes. I've also built a calculator in Google Sheets that you can use yourself to see what impact these changes may have at your income level. It's free to use and I've included it in a link down below in the video description. Just note that I created it using my best knowledge of what changes the National Party proposed in their publicly available election promises. What changes actually take place now that they're in the government are still yet to be decided. We should hear more about them in the 30th of May budget announcements. A whopping 92% of my audience doesn't currently subscribe to the channel. Please make sure to subscribe down below to see more content just like this in the future. Let's now jump over into the Google Sheets calculator. Here you can see two tables off the bat. The first table shows the current tax thresholds. The minimum and maximum bounds are shown side by side in columns A and B. Over in column G is the tax rate for each threshold. Many people get confused here, thinking if they earn $50,000 for example, their entire income is taxed at 30%. That of course is not correct. Only the portion above the lower bound here, or 48,000 in this case, is taxed at 30%. The first $14,000 and the subsequent $34,000 tranche is taxed at 10.5 and 17.5% respectively. When you do the calculation, the effective rate with all the tranches considered is actually a 16% tax rate on a $50,000 income. So that's the left side table. The right side shows us the proposed thresholds from the election cycle. The $14,000 increases to $15,600 and the 48,000 becomes 53,500, and the 70,000 becomes 78,100. By increasing the lowest thresholds, these proposed changes will benefit everybody earning over $14,000 a year, as only above this income level do any tax threshold changes take effect. Many Kiwis earn below this level, if they are out of the workforce, working very limited hours, or on a benefit of some kind. This is why Nicola Willis announced in recent weeks just 83% of New Zealanders over the age of 15 would actually benefit under these changes, or 93% of households. There are two ways the government can change the income tax that we pay. They can either change the thresholds, as they've proposed here, or they can decrease the tax rates themselves. Changing the tax rates would benefit everybody that earns a wage. The logic for changing the thresholds, however, is to correct for bracket creep. This is where taxpayers are pushed into higher tax thresholds, therefore paying a higher effective tax rate due to inflationary wage growth. By changing the thresholds, as many countries do, it accounts for the effects of inflation, of which we've seen a lot in recent years. Jumping back into Google Sheets, we have our tax rate in column G, and the tax calculation in columns I and J. So let's run some numbers. If you earn $14,000 a year, or less, you'll see no benefit from the tax changes. This would affect those working limited hours, such as students and part-time workers. Those earning between $15,600 and $48,000 a year would see their income tax bill drop by around $112 a year, or $2 a week. This group will see a very small benefit from the tax changes, but may be eligible for other election promises, such as the independent earner tax credit, family boost, and working for families. Those earning between $48,000 and $53,500 will see their benefits from the changes rapidly increase the highest of any income band. For every $100 in annual income above $48,000, 
they'll save $12.50 in income tax, which is a massive jump. Now if we look at incomes between $53,500 and $70,000, this group will see their tax bill drop just under $800 a year, or $15 a week. This is where the average Kiwi family will see the biggest benefit, as this threshold change moves over $5,000 of earnings from a 30% tax rate to just 17.5%. This translates to an increase in disposable income, ignoring all other taxes and levies of between 1.43 and 1.8%. Those earning between $70,000 a year and $78,100 will save $3 in income tax for every additional $100 earned above $70,000. And finally, everybody earning above $78,100 a year will see the same benefit. Tax savings of $20 a week or $1,042.50 per year. In percentage terms, this represents an increase of disposable income of up to 1.7%. There are a few observations that I've made. First, these tax thresholds are targeting the middle classes of New Zealand. Changing the $48,000 threshold to $53,500 sees the largest reduction of income tax paid. Many university graduates earn about $50,000 when they leave, meaning they'll have a lot more money in their pocket when they start their careers. Second, these tax changes are not aimed at the very low earners or very high earners. Starting with the low earners, they get little to no benefit from these changes. High income earners, on the other hand, don't see any marginal benefit as their income goes above $78,100. The benefit for them is capped at $1,042 $2.50 a year. If instead of tax threshold changes, National proposed changing the income tax rates, both these groups would have seen a bigger increase in their disposable income, decreasing the lowest tax rate of 10.5% to zero as they have done in Australia, would have drastically increased the disposable income for low income earners. On the other hand, for high earners, if something similar was done to some of those higher tax brackets, they would see a major increase in their disposable income as the benefit isn't capped. For example, if the 33% tax rate dropped to 30%, someone earning $180,000 a year would see a decreased tax bill of over $3,000 a year. So these changes to the thresholds seem like the most measured approach to reducing the tax take from workers. The benefit of these tax changes is unevenly spread, as it usually is. But the benefit to higher income earners is capped. And from what I can see, middle income families will be the ones benefiting most from the proposed changes. Let's hope on May 30th we see those proposed changes implemented. If they aren't, I'll make another video looking at the impact, so stay tuned for that. As always, if you like this video and want to see more personal finance and investing content just like it, make sure to subscribe down below. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.